Welcome, welcome to this week's edition of Reverse Mortgage Weekly, where we go over the reverse mortgage program and talk about what it is, what it isn't, and really try to go into depth in regards to educating the good uh, citizens of Colorado and Texas and all those joining us today about this wonderful program that's changing people's lives uh, every day. So, um, let me go ahead and uh, get started here. So who am I? Uh, my name is Zach Smith. As you can see, I'm a little cold in the office today, so I have my blue sweater on. We're supposed to get like two feet of snow tomorrow. So, um, you know, we'll see if it happens or not. You know, the weather people don't exactly have a, a great uh, reputation of getting it right on. But, you know, I, I try to take it easy on those folks because, uh, to predict the weather, I mean, my gosh, I mean, you gotta you, you gotta have a crystal ball or something to do that, I would think. <laughs> but my name is Zach Smith. I own Chariot Financial. I've been in the mortgage business uh, for 21 years. Um, I've uh, worked for a bunch of different uh, places. I started off at Global Financial down there off of a Havana Street, and then we uh, and then I went to um, Pulte Homes. Worked there for several years. Chase Mortgage, uh, you know, Ch Chase Bank, uh, also worked for Fairway Mortgage for some time. And uh, I said to heck with this. And in 2019, I decided to start my own business and I own uh, Chariot Financial. We're a mortgage broker. So we do specialize in uh, the reverse mortgage program. That's the program that has really been our mainstay of our business uh, for the last uh, probably eight years. Um, I am a CSA, so if you know what that is, I mean, you know, it's a, basically an accreditation that we have uh, for um, uh, for folks who work with older adults. So what are we going to go over in this presentation? Well, the first thing is, is we're going to go over who typical clients are that we see for the reverse mortgage, uh, what a reverse mortgage is, what a reverse mortgage is not, and why people are choosing a reverse mortgage uh, in this economic climate. And also, how do they work in simple terms? So who are typical clients that we see for the reverse mortgage? Well, you know, uh, this program is designed for older adults. So you do have to be at least 55 to be looked at for a reverse mortgage. Now, the most popular programs are the government programs that are sponsored uh, by HUD. Well, they go by HUD guidelines and uh, that's the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And you have to be 62 to qualify for those type of programs. So um, basically uh, the first type of client that we look like, uh, that, we look, that, we, um, that we see basically come in the door are older adults that are looking for an increase in cash flow. So, you know, I just sent out an estimate just literally just 30 seconds ago before we started. Um, and basically, they're trying to increase their cash flow. She's a real estate agent and she is not working nearly as much as she used to. She's not out there, you know, working the 40 to 60 hour weeks doing real estate. And uh, he's a musician and he still brings in some cash, but it's not nearly as much as it was when he was younger. So their cash flow has really been constricted. So there's two things that they're looking to accomplish. Number one, they're looking to get some relief from their mortgage payments. Every single month, as you know, when you have a 30-year fixed uh, loan, you're, the bank is going to ask you to make a monthly payment. I mean, that's basically how the, the mortgage works. You know, you take the mortgage out, you have a monthly payment. And um, so what we're doing uh, with them is that um, that mortgage payment seems to be getting a little harder and harder to um, to reach each month, to pay pay down each month. They owe $140,000 on a, a property. And they did like many people, they started running into trouble. So what did they do? Well, they took out another $40,000 on a line of credit. Well, that is now exhausted. So now they're in this position where their bills are still the same, but their income is not um, not going getting as high. So what they're doing is they're going to convert their first and second mortgage, roll it all into a reverse mortgage so that their payment is optional now. I think their payments with both mortgages are somewhere around $1,800 per month. Uh, that's just principal and interest. 
So now by rolling those into a reverse mortgage, they're still gonna have a monthly payment that's gonna be similar to what they're paying now. That's a big misnomer about this program. The, it's a misnomer that you know we eliminate the mortgage payment. No, 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 it doesn't get eliminated. Uh, you still have a monthly payment. So with these clients, you know, if they wanted to pay $1,800 a month and still pay their mortgage down and pay it off, they still can. They can. Their situation hasn't changed at all when it comes to that uh, situation of being able to pay down the mortgage, to pay a monthly payment. If they want to, they certainly can. But they're given the option now. Basically, the reverse, the reverse mortgage comes in and says, look, if you want to make that monthly payment of $1,800 per month, you certainly can. But we're going to give you the option to take that monthly payment and put it onto the balance of the property. So the property would be negatively amortizing. Well, um, with their situation, it's going to be a huge, huge benefit for them to be able to do that. I mean, in a perfect world, everybody would own their homes free and clear in retirement. They would never have to borrow against them. And, you know, everybody would be saving, you know, 50 percent of their income, you know, when, in their 20s, <laughs> you know, to make sure that they had a solvent retirement. But life happens and sometimes it's just not possible. I mean, if you if you look at the housing expenses right now and look at how wages have increased, it's pretty lopsided. Housing prices have gone up exponentially while wages have stayed not they they've gone up, but they haven't kept pace with housing. So for their situation, for them to be able to um, basically make an optional payment, forego those payments of the $180,000 mortgage, they're going to save $1,800 per month that they're not going to have to put into that mortgage. Now, I know what you're saying. You know, I know there's some folks out there that are saying, well, oh, well, it's going on the balance of their loan, so they're still paying it. Yes, they are. But they're utilizing their equity for victory. And the thing about equity is it's great to have. It's great to have that equity. But the thing is, is that it doesn't do you any good in retirement because it's not liquid. It's a lot like having a glass coffee table right there in the middle of your living room full of cash that you can't get to. So when do you need that cash? Do you need that cash after you sell the house? And if you sell, and you know, a lot of financial gurus, that's their that's their fix for this situation. Well, if your bills are too high, just sell your house and live off the cash. Well, what if you live for another 40 years? You're going to rent for another 40 years? I mean, that's one of the things that um, I, I really try to speak with people about is really long-term planning. Housing for myself, for probably everybody watching this, unless you've paid your house off free and clear, is probably the largest expense that most of us have. So to be able to eliminate that and say, you know what? Yes, I'm going to trade some of my equity now so that I can have a quality of life for the rest of my life if I choose to live and age in place in my property. What a beautiful thing for, for these folks. Now they're not going to have, they're going to open up another $1,800 per month that they can use and however they see fit. There's going to be a little bit left over for them to pay off credit card bills as well. Or if they don't want to pay the credit card bills off, maybe they can take that $1,800, pay down the credit card bills, and keep that line of credit in place for a rainy day. So they've got options now. They're not feeling so stuck, like they are forced into a situation. And and keep in mind, the, those uh, on the on the call right now who are thinking, oh well, you know, they're just trading their equity now so that you know that they're still making a monthly payment. Keep in mind, in a 30-year fixed, I mean, that's what everybody goes to. You know, I, I work with a lot of first-time home buyers, and it's hard for some of these first-time home buyers right now for the very reasons that we just stated. Income has not kept pace with housing. So if you've got an entry-level job right now, it's very difficult for you to qualify for a eight, you know, six, seven hundred thousand dollar home here in the Denver metro area, which is considered in most cases a starter home. <laughs> so um so what happens is, well, the co the parents end up co-signing for the kids and the kids end up renting rooms out or whatever, you know, whatever the case is, they get into a 30 year fixed. All the financial gurus are going to say, well, they're going to tell you to get into a 15 year, but that's just not really practical for a lot of people. The cost of housing is already high. And then if you get in a 15 year, you're going to double your payment. You can get into a 30 year fixed and pay it off in 15. You're just not forced to. 
But the point I'm trying to get at is with a 30-year fixed loan, which is seems to be a stable product right now, when you enter into a 30-year fixed loan, the deck is really stacked against you because, and this has just been the case for years, and you know we just kind of gleefully accept it. The banks love it. They love it. It's a great program for the banks because they're going to make you pay 50% of the interest on a 30-year loan in the first 10 years. So if you got a six hundred thousand dollar loan amount at six and a quarter or six and an eighth, your uh, loan payment, principal and interest, is going to be thirty six hundred dollars per month. Well, guess how much of that is going to paying off the loan that first payment? Six hundred dollars. You're paying thirty six hundred dollars. You're doing everything right. You're taking the advice of your parents or, you know, take it of the financial gurus out there who are saying, OK, get into your 30 year fix, buy property. And I still think it's definitely better than paying rent, you know, because if you're paying rent, you're still paying a mortgage. You're just not paying your mortgage. But um, in that with that thirty six hundred dollar payment, you know, six hundred of that is going to pay off the loan and three thousand on that first payment is going to write to the bank in interest. Now magnify that over an amortized schedule and you'll really see that the 30 year fixed loan is great for the bank. It's not the best product for uh, first time home buyers, but what are the other options? If you don't have a spare five, $600,000 lying around to buy real estate, 30 year fix is gonna be your best option. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Now, I'm a big proponent of the simple interest loans that um, you actually pay down the interest and your payment goes down the next day, but not everybody's gonna qualify for those and that's not gonna be a good fit for everybody. So um, these clients that we're working with are saying, you know what? We're, we're gonna go ahead and that $1,800 that we're paying the mortgage uh, and a lot of it's going to interest, especially with that second note, you know, there's a first and a second mortgage there. Second notes usually have higher interest. So instead of paying our hard-earned retirement, our hard-earned nest egg, instead of paying that directly to the bank, mostly in interest, we're going to take that. We're just going to take that $1,800 and we're going to put it right in our pocket. So uh, for them, it's a really good situation. And that's by and large the most popular way that people use these. However, there are a few other ways that people use these programs as well. So for instance, we see a lot of older adults that need relief from high monthly payments like the mortgage, credit card debt, car payments. And we also see folks who just want to increase their cash flow who uh, are making it right now, but they want to live a little bit higher quality of life. Now, the third uh, group of folks that we see is not what you think of as your typical reverse mortgage client. And these are folks who are very financially savvy. They've paid off their home. They have millions in the bank. But what they want access to is that line of credit. The line of credit with the reverse mortgage does increase in value on the amount you don't borrow against over time. And guess what it's tied to? It's tied to current interest rates. And what are current interest rates doing right now? Well, everybody's, you know, up in arms about, you know, seven, eight percent interest rates. Well, unless you have a reverse mortgage line of credit, then you have growth on that line of credit at seven or eight percent. Not a bad, not a bad situation. It's almost like having another savings account because they're giving access to that equity. Um, through that line of uh, line of credit. It's also some great tax advantages for that as well. You know, once you become a certain age, I think it's lower to 69 and a, and a half or 70 and a half. I don't know for sure, but you have to start taking your mandatory withdrawals from your IRAs. So what does that mean? You got to start taking money out. Uncle Sam comes to you and says, hey, hey, buddy, you got an IRA there. You got to start pulling money out. So what happens when you pull that money out? Well, you pull the money out and you get a nice little letter from the IRS that says, hey, here's your 1099. You just pulled out 50,000 from your retirement funds. We want, we want our cut. Where's our cut? We want you to pay taxes on that. So how do you um, negotiate and try to pay the least amount of taxes possible? Well, the reverse mortgage program is a great way to do that. And if you want more information on that, you can always reach me at chariotreverse.com. That's chariotreverse.com, chariotreverse.com. Let's go ahead and keep going here. So what is a reverse mortgage? Well, it is a mortgage loan. Um, it's with, again, it does have monthly payments, but the payments are optional. 
uh, generally with a line of credit. You can set it up that way. Cash payout uh, would show up with a big suitcase full of cash for you. <laughs> <laughs> or a tenured payment, where it's basically almost like converting your home into an annuity that pays you back each month. So what a reverse mortgage is not. It's not a government takeover of your home, aside from what your uncle or, you know, your, your neighbor, uh, you know, <laughs> is telling you. And I, I've heard this from so many people. Oh, they, they just want your house. The government wants your house. Government doesn't want your house. You know, um, there was a, a, a gal and I, I've been bringing this up a lot in my classes and in this reverse mortgage weekly, because I think it makes a really good point about the program. I ran into a gal the other day and she said, oh, I don't like those reverse mortgages. She found out I'm a reverse mortgage guy. And the first thing says, oh, those are bad programs for people. I knew my friend, she sold her parents' house and she only got $7,000 at closing because the reverse mortgage balance had grown so high that um, there was only $7,000 left at closing. So the first question I asked her, well, you know, that's, that's too bad, you know, um, but how many payments did they skip? And it kind of took her back. She, you know, no one ever thinks about that. No one ever thinks that they think that, oh, it's just negatively amortizing. It's a, not a good program because of that. But what people aren't focusing on are the payments that were not made. So these folks actually had this reverse mortgage for 20 years. And if you take their payments over 20 years, that's about $188,000 that they did not pay out of pocket over the last 20 years. So that's the thing, you know, at closing, they only got seven grand, but during that 20 year period, her parents never had to struggle to make a mortgage payment. They never had to worry about where to live. They were living securely in their property, not having to come out of pocket for that mortgage payment for 20 years. So if that is the case, and um, you know, let's say they didn't do a reverse mortgage. Well, I mean, look at the scenario that way. If they did not forego those payments for 20 years, well, who's making those payments? Is it the parents? Is Are the parents going to be working into their 70s, working into their 80s in some cases to make those monthly mortgage payments? Or is the daughter going to supplement her income so that her parents can have a, a place to live and have a, a, a nice lifestyle? You know, Forbes magazine put out an article here the last uh, couple of years, uh, probably two or three years ago. They talked about how our parents could be our biggest financial risk. And this is so apparent when you see the cost of care, the things that Medicare will and won't pay for. Um, it, the costs just keep magnifying over time. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that, yes, when they sold the property, the, the loan had ballooned. They only had 7,000 at closing, but they didn't have to pay that 180,000 during the last 20 years. So it's kind of like that saying, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. So the thing is, is that that $180,000 has got to come from somewhere. And if, it, if they were to struggle over those last 20 years, you know, we could be telling a completely different story. So uh, just something to think about with these programs is that, yes, you're giving up some of your equity, but you're getting something in return. So it's not a way to make you upside down on your home. You know, that's the other thing that I hear a lot from folks. Oh, you're going to go upside down automatically. It takes a really long time to go upside down on these. And with the specific situation I mentioned, they had a reverse mortgage for 20 years and they weren't upside down. So, um, you know, and that all depends on the market. It depends on the rate. And that's another thing that I'd like to bring to people's attention about the reverse mortgage product is that there's not just one or two people that do these. A lot of loan officers do these right now because things have slowed in the forward mortgage market with the purchases, refinances. There, there are some folks during 2020 when the rates were in the twos and threes, they got into the business and it was just falling out of the trees because you're offering a product at 2% interest rates. Well, when that shifted and they needed to find uh, ways to, pro to provide for their family, well, what are they doing? They're scratching and clawing, trying to find other ways to do that. So they, oh, I'll start doing reverse mortgages. 
So I, I would uh, encourage anyone who's looking at getting a reverse mortgage, do what you would like any other type of mortgage, get three estimates. Don't let them pull your credit. Don't tell them that that's the only way to, to, to get things done. Get three estimates. And also, you know, you want to look at how much they're charging on the origination and also how much they're charging on the, um, the margin as well. That's kind of the hidden cost that, and basically that's the interest rate. Um, so those two things, uh, sometimes mortgage companies have control over. And um, they're probably not going to come out like I would you know, like that and say that because it's not to their benefit. But I have a business model that I made a long time ago. And I started this business model in 2008, right when everything was crumbling. I learned a very, very important lesson back then that it's not what you make. It's what you spend. It's what you keep that really that really counts. So my business model, I have a very low overhead. And what do I do? Well, I pass those savings on to my clients. So I would encourage people who are getting a reverse mortgage to shop around a little bit and see what the origination and the margin costs are. Um, that will tell you that, I mean, there's, there's no other, that's like the truth, you know, there's no hiding that. There, it is what it is. So um, also, it's not a payment free mortgage. So, you know, there's also, you know, a big company had their big, you know, celebrity sponsors uh, doing reverse mortgage loans, got in trouble a few years ago with the Federal Trade Commission because they were out there on their commercial saying, hey, we're going to eliminate your mortgage payment. Well, it's it doesn't eliminate your mortgage payment. It basically converts it into a payment optional. So you still have a payment but it is optional. That's why, you know, again, you can use this program just like any other loan. If you want to pay it off, if you want to pay it down, um, you certainly can. So why are people choosing this uh, financing option in retirement? Well, it's quite simple. You know, uh, I think it boils down to liquidity and long-term financial planning. Let's talk a little bit about home equity and liquidity. So equity is great to have, but unfortunately it's not liquid. It's a lot like having that glass coffee table right in the middle of your living room, full of cash that you can't get to. So it's not like we can take a picture of our house and you know go down to the grocery store and hand it over to the cashier and say, hey, I got a whole cart of groceries here. Uh, I'd like to pay for them with my the picture of this house. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. We can't eat equity. Equity does not do retirees much in retirement because it's not liquid. Um, that's why, you know, when folks want to buy a house cash, I just think it's a bad idea because once you put that money into the house, it's all locked up in the equity. And what does that mean? If you want to get it back out, well, you got to call a banker, get yourself a loan, or you got to call a buyer to sell the property. And then that begs the question, where do you go? So, um, uh, I always, and you know, yes, I am biased. I am the guy who finds money for people and makes a living by finding money for folks with their real estate. And he's telling us, oh, it's a good idea to get loans. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. And that, that's why I'm in this work. I find purpose and I know how it works and I know how to leverage real estate uh, for victory for my clients. So, um, why does this matter in retirement? Well, you know, most retirees are on a fixed income or they have less income, kind of like the example that I started off with. Um, these folks just aren't making as much as they used to, nor do they have the desire to go out and work as much as they used to. So uh, their cash flow is a bit strapped. Uh, most people, again, they don't want to work into their 60s and 70s and 80s, you know, and of course, you know, we see it all the time, you know, you're at the grocery store and you know, the person bagging your groceries is, is um, you know, 70 or 80 years old. Personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with that if it's a choice. But if you feel like you have to, if you feel like I don't want to go to this job, but I'm going because I have to. And I've had countless uh, uh, clients that have been in that situation where they feel like they can't retire because they need to pay their mortgage payment. They don't want to move. They, they uh, want to stay where they're at but they stay at these jobs uh, that they don't enjoy, don't like, but they feel like they have to, they feel like they're stuck. There's countless people that I've worked with that, you know, are suffering financially when the resolution was really right there in front of them the whole time. 
Um, so unforeseen medical expenses can liquidate retirement assets prematurely. It's still the number one reason why people file for bankruptcy. So the reverse mortgage uh, solves the problem of liquidity. Um, you know, basically, it, you know, that glass coffee table in the middle of your living room full of cash that you can't get to. Basically, the reverse mortgage just, you know, installs a drawer. You know, you take the cash out when you need it and you, you don't take the cash when you don't need it. Um, but it has that financial safety net established. So, and basically uh, the way it solves the problem of liquidity is establishing that line of credit so you have access or by a cash payout or converting the existing mortgage payment into a payment optional reverse mortgage. So instead of my clients having to come up out of pocket $1,800 for their principal and interest, it should be interest and principal because interest is mostly paid on those mortgage notes. Um, instead of them paying that interest, um, they're taking that money and putting it in their pocket. Uh, so the other thing that people use that I alluded to earlier was financial planning. You know, some Americans are living longer, which creates concern about running out of retirement assets uh, or the amount that they're going to leave to their heirs. Well, the research of Harold Avensky, Sean Pfeiffer, and John Salter of Texas Tech University, you know, they published an article about the academic acceptance of the reverse mortgage product as it pertains to the survivability rate of one's assets when using home equity in their retirement plan. So basically, if you use your home equity, what they found is that you're going to have your nest egg is going to last longer because you're shifting those funds. You're shifting those funds from taking out of your nest egg to taking out of your home equity. One of the things that I ask my, my uh, students when I teach is, you know, I have a penny that doubles every day for 31 days or a million dollars cash, which one do you want? Well, you want the penny because if you take a penny and double it every day, uh, it's gonna be worth at the end of 31 days, it'll be worth uh, close to $10 million. One penny, two penny, four penny, eight penny, 16 penny. So um, that's just a, a really oversimplified example of exponential growth of how our um, financial uh, vehicles work for our retirement. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that if you take that penny out at 15 days, it's only worth about 115 bucks. Well, the same thing with our retirement assets. You keep your retirement assets, you don't touch them, you let the market work for you and you should receive growth over time. You know, the rule of 72, you know, the, the growth rate of the stock market over the years, you should receive growth. But if you're constantly pulling out so that you can live off of it, well, you're, you're going to stunt that growth exponentially, exponentially. So um, what folks are doing is, well, hey, instead of taking out of my retirement, how about I take out a, hey, how about I take out of my house with a reverse mortgage? That way I can um, use those funds first and then go to my nest egg. If you use that strategy and this graph will show you in every single circumstance, your survivability rate of your assets goes up. So there's different types of reverse mortgages. Uh, the one that is the main type that uh, we work with is the HECM program. It's basically FHA's name for the uh, home equity conversion mortgage is what they call it. It's basically a big fancy name for reverse mortgage that FHA um, uh, looks at. Um, you know, HECM loans are administered by HUD and they come with certain protections for the homeowner. You know, these include a non-recourse feature, so you're never gonna owe more on the property than what it's worth. Bank failure security. So if the bank fails, if we have another 2008, you know, too big to fail and, you know, the, the banks uh, don't make it, you know, and there's a lot of talk about that with these small banks right now, you know, with uh, some of the uh, things going on with um, legislation and having to have cash on hand and the commercial credit crunch. Sorry, I have a bunch of text messages coming in here. <laughs> um, so, um, they have a feature in there that will protect if the bank fails, the government will service the mortgage. Um, increased access to funds in the line of credit over time as well. You know, it's like having another savings account. Uh, well, we know this guy, you know, uh, this is our buddy, uh, uh, Tom Selleck. You know, he's quoted as saying the reverse mortgage loan is just like any other loan. The only difference is how you pay it back. Well, we're trying to keep these to a half hour and I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. If you have any questions for me, 
um, don't hesitate to give me a call anytime. Uh, you can have you can get my contact information at chariotreverse.com. That's chariotreverse.com. Chariotreverse.com. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a blessed day and may a blessing shine down on you and all yours like that of a thousand suns. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you later.